without a preacher. How shall they hear without a preacher? You and I, we are the preachers of God's word. Let's pray that Lord renew us this week to send the word to the lost world. Shall we pray? Lord, we are praying that Lord in this week, in the months and in the years ahead, renew our sensitivity to the word. Renew our sensitivity to send forth the gospel to the nations, to people. Father, we thank you this morning for grace. We are standing by grace. And this morning, we have been re-energized by the word to send forth your word. Give us the grace, the courage, the enablement to send your word to a dying world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Oh, it sounds like there's three people in this massive place. Hallelujah, church. Amen. The song that we're simply going to sing just, just tells us to call upon the name of Jesus. Reminds us in every single situation, we just call upon his name. Hallelujah.
That's why we call the name Jesus. But he is our provider. And that's why I love the name Jesus. 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 That's why I call his name Jesus. 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 It's as simple as that. Come on and help me sing. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, that's why we call his name. In every situation, we call upon his name. Come on and lift your voice and sing. Jesus. When we are sick, he gives us healing. When we need protection, he protects us. We cry, Jesus. We cry, Jesus. We cry, Jesus. We cry, Jesus. 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 We love your name. We love your name. We cry your name. We cry, Jesus. 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 That's why we call the name Jesus, for he is our provider, yeah. Trinity Baptist Church. Church. On behalf of our head pastor and the leadership, I'd like to welcome you all to today's service. A very special welcome goes to those of you worshipping with us for the very first time. My name is Jifi Yonfe and I'll be giving you this week's news. Here at TBC, we are a Bible-believing church, so we are reading the Bible in one year together. This week's scripture readings is from Isaiah 28 to 30 through to Isaiah 46 to 48. For our weekly meetings, check out the bulletin for any information. New membership classes have started. All our regular visitors are invited to attend. At TBC Oasis House, please go to the Wisdom Room from 9am to 10am. And at West Norwood, please speak to a pastor for further information. We are starting to collect for the food bank, in particular the oil and rice donations. If you have any items at Oasis House Croydon, please hand them in to reception and at West Norwood, please leave them in the foyer in the box labelled Food Bank. For all those who graduated last year or are graduating this year, please can you fill out a form in the reception at Oasis House Croydon or ask one of the ushers for a form at West Norwood. We have something very special planned for all graduates. Sire Conference, Sire Conference, Sire Conference. All singles and young adults are invited to join us for our Sire Conference 2017 from Thursday the 17th of August to Sunday the 20th of August. Join our host, Pastor Kingsley PJ, and special guest speakers, Pastor Dan Boache and Pastor Selassie Belomo. On Saturday the 19th, there's a barbecue, games and choreography with Edem Kojo of Azunto Keep Fit Club at West Norwood from 12 noon. On Sunday 20th, join us at TBC Oasis House Croydon for a Sunday celebration service. Come and discover our theme, Jesus is Lord. Who are you? Sire, stand firm. Youth Week starts this Monday at Oasis House Croydon. We'll be meeting every day at 1pm. On Friday, there is evangelism from 12 noon. On Saturday, there is a special worship conference. And on Sunday, it is Youth Sunday at both West Norwood and Oasis House Croydon. Men, 
I couldn't quite hear that. I said, men, men, on Saturday the 12th of August, you are meeting with your mentees during the youth week. All men are encouraged to be in contact with their mentees by phone before then. If you're a man in TBC and you do not have a mentee, kindly see Pastor Mark. Watch out for further information. Also, please remember to kindly pay your £50 dues. It is the most anticipated gospel event of 2017. ABN Radio Gospel Fest with Ghana Music Awards Artist of the Year and Agma Artist of Excellence West Africa, Joe Metal. Get your tickets now from the ABN Radio website, www.abnradiouk.com. Date is Bank Holiday Sunday, 27th August 2017 at the Plush TBC Oasis House, 5 to 9 Peel Road, Croydon, CR03 EX. Doors open at 5 p.m. You stand the chance of winning some amazing prizes from ABN Radio and ABN TV with each ticket purchased. Other amazing artists for the evening include Omo Jesu, Andrew Bello, Nick Vani, Juanita Francis, Emmanuel Smith Tally, and Shakina. Don't miss ABN Radio Gospel Fest with Joe Metal, powered by ABN TV, UK's favorite black broadcaster in association with Blue Rose Properties, Valesco, Fanta Creations, and Ganobi. ABN Radio Gospel Fest, get your tickets now. Here's one for your diaries. Our awesome Alpha course is back. It starts on the 13th September and runs for 11 weeks and it will be held at Oasis House Croydon. Alpha is great for all those who are non-Christians, non-believers, new Christians and mature Christians. So join us on the 13th of September and you surely will not regret it. For more details, contact the church office on 0208 766 7732. This brings me to the end of the TBC News. Connect, share, like, or follow on the TBC Media app, which is available on iOS and Android, and on the web by typing in TBC Oasis House. My name is G for Young Pair. I've been giving you this week's news. Enjoy the service and have a very blessed week. the parents Justice and Jenny to present their child for dedication. May I ask all the pastors and leaders to join me upstage. Well wishes as they come, you can come and stand behind them. I will ask the worship leaders to sing with us my lifetime. I want to emphasize that dedication is not infant baptism, but it is giving back to God what he has given to us. Dedication is a time of thanksgiving for the birth of the child and where we pray God's blessing on the child and where parents dedicate themselves to bringing their children up in the fear of the Lord. Our children are not our possessions. They belong to God who entrusts them into our hands for just a little while to help them grow. Parents, I will be asking you some few questions. If you are in agreement, you will respond, we will. The first question, will you pledge to support and love your child by providing the opportunity for him to grow up in the family of faith with the hope that he will someday confess Christ as his own teacher, Lord and Savior? 
second question. Will you, to the best of your ability and with God's help, provide a loving family environment in which your child can grow in love, loyalty, and obedience to God? Amen. What name have you given to this child? Jarvis Jaden Edgy. Church, shall we repeat it after him? Jarvis Jaden Edgy. Why have you called this child th these names? The meaning of the name of the child, Jarvis. Jarvis means conqueror, and Jaden means God has answered. Amen. Amen. Saints, if we are committing to hold this child up in our daily prayers and assisting the parents in Christian nature, please, can we signify this by raising, standing up and stretching our right hand towards the child and pronounce God's blessings upon the child? In 30 seconds, let's pronounce God's blessings upon the child. Please bring your prayer to a close. We'll invite our head pastor to come and pray for this child. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Father, this morning, in the name that is above all names, we remember that thou art the source of life. We bring before your throne of mercy this morning, Jarvis, J.D., and she. Jesus, the Lion of Judah, our mighty king, our conqueror, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords. We honor you in the name of Jesus, that as Jarvis is named, so shall he be. A conqueror of the wickedness of his generation. A conqueror of anything that is not godly. A conqueror of his emotions. A conqueror of anything that rises up against God. A royal diadem in the hands of God. Make your son a delight in his generation. Jarvis Jaden will grow up and work strong in the wisdom and in the knowledge of the living God. As sons are laid on the head, anoint him with favor. As we touch the feet, he will enter and he will not be ejected. Wherever the source of his feet shall tread, he shall possess it. His sons are anointed and it shall be blessed in the name of Jesus. Every organ, every tissue functions according to the purpose for which God has ordained it to be. As his day, so shall his strength be. He will grow in the wisdom and in the might of King David. Jarvis shall be great in his generation. His going out and coming shall be blessed. A gift to his generation, a blessing to mom and dad. And this morning, as a family and as a church, we boldly declare in the name of Jesus that Jarvis, Jaden, and she is dedicated in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please, well wishes, you may be seated. And let's leave the parents alone. Yeah, Justice, I present this word of God to you as Jarvis' name depicts. He's a conqueror. Every day, read the word of God into his life. And when he grows, the word of God will be a light unto his path. Amen. Jeremy, I present this certificate unto you. Keep it. One day, it will be very useful to Jarvis that on this day, 6th of August, it was dedicated by our head pastor and general overseer, Pastor Kingsley Apieje. God bless you. Please be seated. Amen. You are great, yes you are, holy one. What upon the sea, raise your dead. You reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you. Oh, 
Everything written about you is great. Demons eternally tremble at your presence. That is why as a church, we come to declare we will know no other God besides you. Your word is life and your word is anointed. I pray my Lord and my God this morning in the name of Jesus that you will speak to us in a fresh way. I pray that let every burden be lifted in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. 
this morning, let there be a diversion of any arrow that is directed against your people. I pray that our walk with you shall be enriched and that the world will know that we serve a living God. To you be the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people will shout and say, at this time, shall we put our hands together for the leaders of the next generation? Hallelujah. The future scientists of their generation. The changes of their generation. The apostles of their generation. Godly men and women. <laughs> Children anointed with the fear of God. Children anointed with uncommon favor. Children who know their God. Children who will have the understanding of their age. And know what to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Kindly turn with me again in your Bibles to Paul's letter to the church at Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. As I seek by grace to complete the series of teachings we have had on this chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, reading from the NIV, I begin from the first verse. If I speak in the tongues of men, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be still. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Amen. Loving one another, you and I will agree that no chapter is read so commonly at weddings than First Corinthians chapter 13. Probably because of its poetic nature, but also I believe that because of the richness of what the scripture says in this chapter. But the truth is that we've heard it so often that most of the times we don't ponder to consider its meaning. The truth about this chapter is that it was sent to Christians who were torn apart by contentions within the church because they had become so immature by virtue of the manifestations of the giftings of the Holy Spirit amongst them. So much so that they started comparing their gifts. And some believe that if I can pray in tongues more than anybody I am the best. Some also believe that by virtue of the faith that they had that could move mountains made them the best. But Paul writes and says to them, regardless of the gifts that you had, without love, they are nothing. He makes it clear to them that love is an action and a behavior. 
but now an inner feeling. And that love is a way, and that it is the most excellent way. Let me ask us a question this morning. How many people do we know that have made it to the Hall of Fame in music or art, literature or sport because of their love? All those who have made it in literature, in sports, in music and art are elevated because of the status that they had in that which they do. How many people are monuments built for because of the manifestation of their love? Yet from God's perspective, love is the chief of all virtues. And I believe that you will agree with me that a name that regularly comes to mind when we talk about building monuments for people who have exhibited love will be Madame Teresa. Conquered the world with her love by serving the poor. Love is so important, the Bible tells us that God is love. Not that God has love, the Bible says that God is love. And we are commanded to imitate this love of God. A love that is perfect. Demonstrated to us in the whilst we were sinners, Christ died for us. A love that is unending. A love that is everlasting. A love that picks us from the miry clay and puts us on the rock to stay. A love mingled with grace, so deep and so rich, that was willing to lay his own life down for us. And this love has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. And this morning, as a people of God, this letter comes to us again. And what the Lord is saying to us by the leading of the Holy Spirit through the Apostle Paul is that 1 Corinthians 13 is a measuring rod by which you and I can know as to whether our love is genuine or not. It is not about gift. It is about love. It is said that it is love that makes the world go, makes the world go round. How much more? If a church works in love, may we be known for our love in the name of Jesus. So Paul tells them that if you are so fluent, and no, he begins by saying, if I speak in the tongues of men. So that means that there are tongues of men, and there are tongues of angels, and there are tongues of the spirit. Different tongues, but that is not a topic today. And, and there are people who can, I know somebody who is fluent, so fluent in eight languages. Perfect English, perfect French, perfect Spanish, perfect Portuguese, perfect Chinese. Speaks them, a woman. One of the ministers in the current government in Africa. And Paul is saying that if you have, such gifts, and you can speak a hundred languages. Let me put my own figure there. And you don't have love, you are only making noise. And he says, if you can speak with the tongues of angels, in other words, if you know how angels speak and you can talk like them, and you have no love, you are like the drama hitting the cymbals. You are making noise. And if your faith can move mountains and, and, and that your gift is so supernatural that you can tell people their birthdays, where they were born, their names, ditto. But if it is not done in love, he says, you are nothing. So what Paul does for us in this chapter is to take 1 Corinthians chapter 12, talking about the gifts of the spirit, chapter 14, talking about the gifts of of the spirit, and then in between chapter 13, he puts in the real sandwich. You see, sandwich taste is tasteless unless you put in either the, 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 uh, 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 the tuna or the beggar. So what Paul is saying is that if you have gifts, chapter 12, if you have manifestation of gifts, chapter 14, 
and there is no cheeseburger or quarter panda or fish or, 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 or tuna in the middle stuffed with all kinds of things. Don't eat too much mayonnaise. In the middle, you are nothing. You are only eating bread. You've not eaten a sandwich. So what Paul is telling us today is that love is what makes the kingdom strong. By this will all men know you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And the criteria of that love is as Jesus loved us. That is our command. And the good news is that we are able to do it in the name of Jesus. So in 15 verbs, he paints for us a beautiful, perfect picture of how love is intended to be. The agape love of God. So in this chapter, we see three things. What love is, what love is not, and what love does not, and, and what love can do or what love does. So quickly, and I will encourage those of you who have not been here to take the tape. The previous two messages will give you a better background. So Paul begins the first part by saying what love is. And he says love is patient. And the Greek word is makrathenia, which signifies patience with circumstances and patience with people. And the truth is that we need both. Patience is standing firm under pressure. Love does not have a short fuse. Uh, the, the truth about love is that love will tolerate people's shortcomings. True love is patient with people because they understand that each one of us is a work. We are tools in the hands of God, and God is not finished with us yet. Sisters, listen to me. Listen to this old man. If a man proposes to you and is rushing to sleep with you before the wedding, that man does not love you. If he loves you, he will be patient. If he tells you, but after all, we, are, we will get married. Yes, wait till we get married. Are you hearing me? That guy, that guy, that guy is just using you. Hallelujah. Love is patient. I'm too tempted on that. Let me move forward. But he also says love is kind. You see, genuine love is kind. Kindness looks for opportunity always to help others. Love, love is so kind, it will not say that you, your predicament is because you have done something wrong. But genuine love is kind. Always looking for an opportunity to help and to lift others up. Kindness understands that people go through the righteous suffer not because they are sinners, but at times so that God through that suffering can establish a testimony in their lives. Kindness does not judge. Through love. Will never Because the moment you judge somebody, you are giving yourself a reason not to help that person. So love is kind, but does not judge. But one thing kindness does, kindness is tough. Kindness will not give to people anything that they need. Because there are some people, if you give them everything that they need, it will kill them. If you give an addict more money, what will he use that for? He will kill himself. You arrange and send that person to a rehab center. Are you hearing me? Kindness also means that you don't cut people off, but you must know how to love people from Goshen. Are you hearing me? No, no, there are some people, you don't cut them off, but you don't bring them too close to you, they will kill you. You need discernment. But the mo what makes love work is that you don't cut anybody off. Love never says it is over. 
Then he goes on to say, love does not end. I think I've elaborated all of this in the first two uh, uh, sermons, so please get the tape. Envy means to be displeased with the success of others, to wish you had someone's success or breakthrough. And there are those when they see p- other people coming up, they just can't stand it. But you have no clue the price that person has paid to be where they are. God is in the, bl- in the business of blessing and promoting his children. When your time is up, the Lord will lift you up. Understand that love does not envy. And simply because, you see, so from here, Paul paints eight pictures of what love is not. And the first thing he says love is not is that it does not. So anytime you see envy in the church, it means that that person does not understand the scriptures. That person is not walking or operating in love. Beloved, you and I must understand that life is not a competition. We are not competing with anybody. Look, if there is competition, compete against your own self. When you are tired, you sleep. If you like a particular suit, wear it as, hey, it's yours, so wow, wear it as. Uh, not just because somebody wore something, the next day you, why? Love does not end. It doesn't. Love rejoices in the success of others genuinely. When you see a brother's breakthrough, you know the Saturday of that person has come. Your own Friday is coming in the name of Jesus. Cain killed Abel because of envy. Abraham and Dathan, because of envy, were buried alive. The earth opened for them to be swallowed. Job 5 verse 2, the Bible says, Wrath kills a foolish man, and envy slays the simple one. Manos you in the name of Jesus. Don't be telling yourself, why always him? It is God who decides. But Paul says, secondly, love does not boast. In other words, love does not parade itself rough. You see, love is not being big-headed, but being big-hearted. How will you be remembered? As a proud woman? As a proud young man? As a proud man? How will you be remembered? How, how, boasting. What is it that you have that God did not give to you? And if you believe that God gave it to you, then there must be no chip on your shoulder. Is somebody hearing me? And I'll say this always and always. Two men have come to respect and love in the kingdom. Billy Graham and Pastor Enoch Adebo. And we know him. He is the father of TBC because he's my dad. Spiritual. And thou with so much. You see, his humility humbles me. Billy Graham. And dealt with so much grace and favor by the simplicity of that man. When he turned 80, one pastor was giving a testimony about his life. That Sunday, Billy decided to go to his church. Had accepted to come and preach there, but of course, if Billy Graham is coming to preach in your church, you don't announce it. If we had put Pastor Adeboyes coming here on ABN TV or on radio, none of you would have had a seat here. And you know what I'm talking about? Oh, my goodness. So it was not announced. The next day, the protocol and the ashes dressed, waiting for Billy, you know expecting him to come with, you understand what I mean? But to their shock, <laughs> a car parked, and here's a man singing and his Bible in his heart, tapping it on his, on his tie. They were shocked. That's simplicity. Love does not boast. Then he goes on to say, love is not arrogant or proud. Pride goes before a fall. You see, pride is an attitude. And when you see pride people, nobody tells you. Their own attitude announces them. The way they walk, the way they behave. They are walking alone, tells you, behold, here they come. Ha! 
Brown people, hey, what happened to your shoulder? Oh. Love is not proud. Love sees others better than themselves. And if in the church we will promote and elevate and bless and lift others up, Jesus, though God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But took upon himself the form of a servant. Nebuchadnezzar, pride brought him down. Satan was cast onto the earth. Somebody said, yeah, Lord, you shouldn't have thrown him here. King Herod was eaten by worms. The truth about pride is that it will destroy you. Naaman was only lucky that he had a servant who advised him. Go, all oh, what the man of God said, go and wash. And there are some people, they think that if the man of God doesn't come and shout some words and do some whatever, they've not been prayed for. I told the man of God will come down and come call on the name. Oh, what he said, go dip yourself in the Jordan seven times. This man took offense. Are not Abana and Farah rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? If you know they are better, why come to Israel? The truth about proud, about proud people is that you can't help them. Because they know better than you. They look down and they believe that without them, nothing can happen in their lives. But Paul goes on to say that love is not rude. There are people who take delight in being blunt and justify that as being honest. They tell you, I say it as it is. You have to say it as it is, but you must always season your words with salt and with wisdom. Amen. Amen. Love does not always verbalize all its, its thoughts if it does not build the others up. You see, respect and humility is a sign of your upbringing. Love and talking to people courteously. When you do that, not only are you giving the honor and the glory to God, you are also telling the world, I've been properly brought up. And at times, you see, young people, listen, this country, the advantage you have is that you have the right to say it as it is. Never do it without respect. My friend, Pasagi, met the young people in his church, and very soon I'll be meeting very many of you to see the way forward. He told them, say whatever you want to say, but with respect. Agape love is gracious. Hallelujah. It never forgets that being courteous, tactful, and politeness are lovely things as a Christian. But Paul goes on to say, love does not seek its own. Not insisting always on your own rights. Me, 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 and me alone. But love seeks to give, but not to gain. Love does not seek its own because their focus is not on them only. And if people go into marriage and they are seeking their own, they become very selfish in that marriage and they make things very difficult for the husband or the wife. My mom, my dad, my family, my mom, my... You are married. Love does not seek its own. The two of you have now come together to start another family. You must bless your family, but understand that your family is number one. Love will never seek its own. Hallelujah. Love is not possessive. It is not stubborn or dominating. Love is not motivated by self-interest. The spirit of entitlement is not Christian. We are called not only to share. Those who sit their own, who desire to sit, if they don't get their own way in the church, they tell everybody the church is not good, but they never leave the church. You don't stay in what is not good. You are only saying that because you did not get your way. Hallelujah. But he goes on to say that love is not easily angered. 
Hallelujah. <laughs> or provoke. It is not given to emotional adverse. And I was saying the other time, there are some people you have to pick your words carefully. If you are talking to them, you, you need a scale to weigh your words. Because you don't know what will offend them. Hey, before the words come, you have to weigh it. You have to think, ah, how is he going to take it? How is she so sensitive that anything you say is interpreted differently? Love is not easily angered or provoked. Literally, that people, you have to tiptoe. That, that which you are going to say, you have to, uh, as you are tiptoeing, you are weighing your words. Tell your neighbor mercy. Or say it louder. Love is not easily angered or provoked. Understand that regardless of who you are, you will be provoked. And if the love of God has been shed abroad in your heart, Romans 5, 5, by the Holy Spirit who is given to you, then you will manifest love instead of anger. Are you hearing me? Jesus was called a carpenter's son. He was called all kinds of names. But you never saw Jesus reacting. And he lives in us by virtue of his spirit. You don't easily take offense. Love. That, so we go on. Number seven. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Love does not take into account a wrong suffered. Some only remember the wrongs they've suffered in life. And there are some people, they can't forgive. And those of you who watched the finals of the 100 meters yesterday, of the World Championship, you heard the booing of Gatling. The guy said nothing. We all love Usain Bolt. Are you hearing me? But if after five years, people are still holding the offense of somebody against him and will publicly humiliate him. God will elevate him. And yesterday he spoiled the party for all of us. <laughs> huh? and, and you know what? God, you know what? No, people were concentrating on Christian. What was, what's the surname? The, the, the concentration was not on Gatling. But from nowhere, may the Lord speed you up in the name of Jesus. May the Lord accelerate your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Before we all became aware, to be honest with you, I didn't know who. I thought that other guy had won the race. I thought Koma had won. Love does not keep records of wrongs. And when Margaret Thatcher was prime minister, you said this, I said nothing. Then when your major's time, you said this, I said, all of this is still in your head. Your head will break off. Ah! Huh. There, are, there are people there. Anything you do, it is still there. Waiting for, a, you know, you can't be in marriage and be an archaeologist. Archaeologist, you are always digging the path. And there are some who are in, they are married, but they are psychologists. Hey, I knew that was what you were going to say. <laughs> Reading people's minds. Oh, tell your neighbor, mercy. Come on, for the second time. And for the last time, mercy. People are offended five years ago, they still can't let it go. Paul goes on to say, love does not delight in evil. It thinks no evil about others. It is not suspicious about other people's motives. And there are some Christians, they suspect everybody. You are killing yourself. Oh. They think that anything that people are doing, they are doing it because of what. Listen, God looks at it. Let God judge. You are, when did God make you a judge? Love takes no joy in people's misfortune. There are those when they see somebody fall. Yeah. If your brother fall, what, what, what good, what, what benefit do you gain out of that? Are you hearing me? 
During the Kosovo War, the war of the coalition, the coalition against Serbia, one American soldier, when his aircraft was shot and ejected into safety, seven good days the guy was hiding. But his senses were active. And on the day of the rescue, America spent over $17 million to rescue one man. $17 million would come off large aircrafts and all, bombing somewhere. The, the Serbians, oh, they went and took their man away. But when a believer falls, it's like joy has come into the church. That is not love. That is not love. Love does not delight in evil. Then the Apostle Paul adds five glorious positives about love. Look at verse 6. Powerful. He says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with what? The truth. Love is devoted to truth in everything. You tell people you love the truth. You see, truth and justice go together. You don't cover the truth, but you say it in a way that will build others up and not destroy them. In chapter 5, when Paul wrote to the Corinthians, there was a man in the church, a young man, who was sleeping with his father's, guy, his father's wife. And the church had covered it up. Probably the man <laughs> was the main giver in the church. So the leaders, including the pastor, were scared. If they thought if they say it, the man would take all his money away. It took the leading of the Holy Spirit for the apostle Paul to rebuke the Corinthian church. He said, that is not love. Love rejoices with the truth. There is something situation ethics. Those of you who did ethics and the university and sociology, you all know of Joseph Fletcher. One of his statements is that whether lying, adultery, or murder can be good if it is done in love. I totally disagree with that. Fletcher says that any act, be it lying, adultery, murder, can be good if it is done in love. Wow. Euthanasia. They think they are killing because it is for the good of the person. Wow. If an act does not conform to the truth of the word of God, it cannot be done in love. Truth and love go hand in hand. If you love people, you tell them the truth. Paul goes on and says, love always protects. Uh, and you see, he concludes this chapter with four things that love always do, or four things that love always does. And, and the first one, he says that love will always put into action protection. Look at verse 7. He says, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Eight, seven, eight, always protects. One thing about love is that it will always protect. It watches out for others. You watch one another's back. You are not protecting evil, but you are not watching your dirty linen publicly. A visitor comes to the church. You know why you are telling the visitor. A sister comes to the church. You've made yourself be busy. You know everything that is wrong with the pastor. You are telling the person. You know every church member by name. <laughs> you see that one with that bag. <laughs> you look at it. I will tell you something. You see the other one. You, you see the way they are walking. You wait. When we go, I will tell you something. You call me. Today, call me at 7 o'clock. I will tell you something. Wow. And you can be on the phone and chat. You know everybody. That is not love. Love always Protest regardless 
Yes, he did that. But, but, huh. he who covers a transgression, Proverbs 17, 9, seeks love. But he who repeats a matter separates friends. Noah's sons. When Ham saw his father's nakedness, told his brothers laughing. But the two others took a cloth with their back and covered their back. That is Christianity. We cover one another up. We call the person, hey, my friend, next time you do this again, you rebuke the person. But not publicly. And, and, and there are things I have done. Today, I won't do them because when I was a child, I acted like a child. Oh, you are not there. Shem and Japheth, they walk backwards and cover the other eye. Love covers the faults of others. It takes it. It talks to people privately. Then Paul goes on to say that love always trusts. Oh, see, the trust is missing in the church. We don't trust one another in the church anymore. It bears all things. That's not me. The, the fact that love always trusts or bears all things does not mean that a person is daft or naive. But it is a command. And the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us, so we only act accordingly. Can you imagine if the Lord were to go around drumming our thoughts and our shortcomings to one another? Can you imagine? The thoughts the devil drives through your mind. A covering that offers protection from hostile element. The truth about love is that it always protects. And not only protects, but trusts. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. You see, one thing about love. When the Bible says love always trusts, God knows what he's saying. Can you imagine how Jonah's wife could trust Jonah? When Jonah came back and said, I was in the belly of the whale for three nights. Think about it. Are you with me? <laughs> you tell me you are going somewhere. I don't hear of you for three days. No text. No test. No WhatsApp. Hey, I know. Every day excuses. Every day excuses. That is how you are. But truly, the guy was in the belly of the way for three days. Uh, and you see, sisters, don't let anybody come and gossip to you about your husband. Don't. You know why? Because if you are not careful, if you let the man go, the next day you'll be sitting in church. Whoever finds a wife and obtains favor, before you become aware, that one who was telling your husband is da da da, is getting married to your husband. Then you'll be sitting there saying, The Lord has disappointed you. You disappointed yourself. <laughs> You see, the best gift you can give to somebody is to trust that person. And parents, one of the things our children desire from us is that we can trust them. If a child realizes that you trust them, they will do everything for you. Trust them. Trust your husband. Trust, trust your pastor. I'm telling you, any penny that is collected in this church will be used for the, re the purpose for which it is collected. And I honor the Lord for the pastors and the elders he has given to me. We will never, I fear God. And let me say this to you. I am determined after preaching and serving to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven when the fullness of time is up. Trust us as your leaders. 
When we come and we say things are tough, we are not lying to you. When we come and we say give, give cheerfully. When we come and we say support something, it's from our hearts. I'm telling you, very few churches have the grace God has given to us. I thought you put your hands together for Jesus. I'm telling you. God took us to Accra, and within a year, we had done what God had made us do by grace. Too many pastors are angry with us. Because if you go to the auditorium in Accra, what you see, oh, look, last two weeks when I was in Accra, they bought their own LED. Four people came together and said, Pastor, we don't want you to mention this at church. We are paying for it. $37,000. They have paid. But that same grace is coming here in the name of Jesus. These are top businessmen. Just because every penny we took, we had done what we said we would do with the money. Others are angry because they've been collecting money and collecting money and collecting money and they never passed the foundation of the building. We will not lie to you. No, 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 no. That is why you can trust us. Glory to God. Love offers risk-taking trust. Jonah, where have you been? I was in the belly of the whale for two. You sure? <laughs> think about it. You? You think I'm daft? <laughs> belly of the whale? My friend, find something wise to say to me than talking to me like that. Ah. Uh-huh. Where did you go? Uh-huh. Tell me, I'm listening. I was in the belly of the whale. <laughs> and I prayed. And that fish vomited me out. Now look at you. Shame on you. (laughs) (laughs) You see, at times, one of the best ways of trusting people is just to be silent. And just watch people. Do you know? And in life, you will always be happier with the things you didn't say than the things you say. Seriously. But Paul goes on and he says, love hopes all things. This is the last battle. Love always hopes all things. In other words, you see the potential in people. The, the Greek word there is el, el pizzo, to hope or wait for salvation with joy and full confidence. You can see the potential in others, and as such, you don't write them off. Love, lo, love says it is not over. A, a saying Pastor Matthew says all the time, it is not over till God says it is. It is not over. And as such, you don't write anybody off. Love helps all things. Peter failed Jesus, but Jesus did not see the failure in Peter. He saw his future. May the Lord make us Christians who will see the potential and the grace of the Lord over the lives of others and have hope for them. Ah. God takes people's failures and produces giants in them. That is why we should have hope with our youth. That is why we should have hope with our children. You see, when I stand here and make those declarations over our children, only heavens know the picture I'm seeing. And may it come to pass in the name of Jesus. You see, if you don't believe anything, I remember the first day I remember I brought about four or five people here. Elder Chris was one of them. I, we came here, some of my elders, and I pointed this. It was an empty shed. I didn't see an empty shed. What you are seeing is what I saw. 
and the potential over your children, you can't toy with it. Uh, that is why when we say that, come every first Friday of the, the month for us to pray with your children, please don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. If there is any gift you can give to your child, understand that life is so fragile, so you will protect them with your love and with your prayer. Love hopes all things. God takes people's favorites and produces giants. So David produced a giant out of him. Up to today, it is the star of David. Took Moses and Medra. God had hope in, in Moses because he knew what he could do. Mary Magdalene. A prostitute. But Paul ends this great chapter and says, love always perseveres or endures all things. Love faithful. You see, that word endure is a neutral word that causes one to hold his or her position in ev at every cost, even unto death. The truth about persevering love is that the battle may be tough, but the soldier, the Christian who is compared to a soldier battles on. There, there, there may be difficulties in the marriage. Challenges may be so real. Your wife may be attacked by the enemy. Your husband may be attacked by the enemy. But love never fails. You don't abandon that man at that point when he can hardly and barely stand on his feet. You don't abandon that woman when she is at her lowest. You stand with her. You stand with him. That is love. That is love. Vice President Kingsley talking, I have seen Christians who have abandoned their wives and their husbands. Either because the man had stroke. Either because the woman could not bear. Either because the ancestral curse in that family started manifesting in one of them. They abandoned them. But true love Yes, will stand. No wonder today in many churches they've taken the confession for better for worse. It is not a statement of doubt. It is a statement of scripture that confirms the words of Meshach, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That we will not bow. For we know that our God is able to deliver. But even if he doesn't, we will not bow. So when we say for better or for worse, we are saying that regardless of what life will throw at us, we are in this together till death separates us. May God make your marriage rich in the name of Jesus. I didn't hear you. I said may God make your marriage rich in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you will persevere through tough times because the Lord is faithful. Let me bring this great chapter to an end by saying to us an advice that I heard Oprah Winfrey give when she was giving a lecture at a university in Boston. And she says, this is the advice my mom gave to me. And these are the words. Leg she said, your legacy in every life you have. Your legacy, sorry, is every life you have touched with love. Your legacy is the life you touch with love. The compassion children you are supporting. The orphanage children you are supporting. The poor people that you are supporting. Helping build God's kingdom. People that you touch with love. And she goes on to say, not the square footage of your house or cars or shoes or fame. But your legacy. Your legacy is every life you have touched with love. 
I pray. Because of you, may the world go round. May the kingdom spin with joy around. May the Lord bless you and make you great. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shall we bow every head at this time? You are here this morning and you are saying, I want to give my life to Jesus as my personal Lord and my personal Savior. I want this love of God to be shared abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit who is given to me. I want all my past sins to be forgiven. I want to begin a new life with Jesus. Wherever you are seated, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you. You are saying, I want Jesus in my life. I want to be born again. I want this love. I want this love. I want this love. I want this love. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. I want this love to be shared abroad in my heart. I want this love to be shared abroad in my heart. You are also here. You are saying, I have been visiting Trinity regularly, and I would like to become a member. I want you also to raise your hand for me. You are saying, I want to be a member of Trinity Baptist. I love the church. I love the, the leaders. And I want to become part of this family. Raise your hand for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any more hands? You are saying, I want to be part of this great family. With every head bowed, may I ask you to do me a favor? Don't feel shy. If you raise your hand, just come to me at the front. I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. With every head bowed. Don't feel shy at all. Don't feel shy. Be bold. Come, 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 come. Come. No pressure. Bless you, my sister. Hallelujah. Come on, you can do better for Jesus. You can do better for Jesus. You can do better for Jesus. Bless you, my daughter. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you, my brother. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Shall we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the promise keeper. You are the way maker. Glorious in all that you do. We honor you for bringing our sisters and our brother to us. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that TBC will become a comfort zone of your joy, your favor, of growth, of discipling, and opened heavens for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, God's people will shout and say, Amen. Please follow this sister. She will have a quick word with you and you will come back. Yeah? Thank you. you oh, church, please. At this time, we'll bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. And the last time, I encourage us as a church that one of the things we can do as a family is to at the end of every month, go the extra mile and just say, I will donate a hundred pounds, at least for the next year, for my church, for the church to meet some of the bills that it has to pay. This is my church. I love my church. And in addition to my tithe, I will give an extra hundred pounds. Every month, I will give 50 pounds. Every month, I'm able to give an extra 50, an extra 20 pounds. I want us to begin that from today. And I pray that we will become a very faithful church. Understand that this is a new place, so naturally everything has quadrupled. But God is faithful. Amen. 
if you look at the building, you see that there are no windows, but the ventilation is so great. It's power, it's money. Amen. It's money. So you are saying every month, I will let Pastor Kingsley sleep well. I love my dad. I can trust my dad and my leaders. God has given him great pastors, great uh, uh, elders and deacons and deaconesses and, uh, and leaders. They will not steal a penny from us. These are honest people. Shall we pray? Just before we pray, if you need an envelope, raise your hands. If you need an envelope, raise your hand. Okay. Let's pray. Father, what a privilege to know you. What a privilege to know that there is nothing we have that you have not given to us. I pray that may our giving this morning again be with generosity. Touch our hearts in our giving. In the mighty name of Jesus, God's people will shout and say,
Come on, put your hands together for Jesus.